Colossal Biosciences is using CRISPR gene editing technology to resurrect animals that have gone extinct. They are starting next year with a woolly mammoth and are making plans for the Tasmanian tiger. The plan is to release 100 woolly mammoths inside a park in Siberia. This is officially being done under the guise of climate change. They claim that by adding megafauna back into the Arctic tundra, it will offset carbon emissions. The company has already raised over 12 million euros, which includes funding from the CIA. The CIA's venture capital firm, InQtel, is a stakeholder of Colossal Biosciences. Euronews points out that the plan seems counterproductive, seeing as how over 30% of trees worldwide are currently going extinct, and points out its potential dangers of introducing ancient unknown pathogens into our modern world. But when you look into the company's co-founder, George Church, it becomes clear that it's really all about pushing the agenda of human cloning and transhumanism. Harvard scientist George Church received donations from 2005 to 2007 from Jeffrey Epstein, the infamous transhumanist who was planning on establishing a baby farm at his New Mexico ranch to seed the earth with his DNA. In 2019, Church awkwardly apologized for his association with Jeffrey Epstein on 60 Minutes. But it, you know, it was one of these things where you first learn about it, and, it, and it's not, it's just like, uh, when you first hear about it, it doesn't sound like it's something serious. And it's only recently that we've found out that, that, uh, that it was something serious, or that become aware how serious it was. The professional connection between Jeffrey Epstein and George Church was their common desire to clone humans, which is something that Church is most passionate about. His work has been focused primarily on creating superior humans and wants to bring Neanderthal man back from extinction and give them their own culture and political force. He is also passionate about creating customized living creatures out of DNA to serve mankind as we see fit. When asked if he believed in God, Church responded that he respects all people's faith, but his faith is in science and that the true understanding of nature is only available to the scientists. This psychopathy that has infected man with an obsession to play God has attracted many atheists into the field of genetic engineering. The word chimera no longer refers to an ancient mythological creature having the head of a lion, the torso of a goat, and a serpent tail. It is a scientific reality of the world today. Animal-plant hybrids like GMO tomatoes with fish scale skin, hybrid viruses spliced together in a bio lab, and even human-animal hybrids where human stem cells are inserted into animal eggs to fertilize a mutant embryo. Supposedly, technological advances announced in the 1970s enable scientists today to mix the genes of different animals and the genes of animals and plants. But how long have these types of experiments been carried out covertly across the world? And what human-animal chimeras have been created? In Russia in 1926, biologist Ilya Ivanov attempted to artificially inseminate women with chimp sperm. Artificial inseminate a transplanted woman's ovary inside a female chimp, and he even grafted slices of ape testes onto rich aging men in an attempt to rejuvenate their vigor. It would be naive to believe this type of experimentation ever stopped, or ceased to advance through its practice. Who knows what monsters have been spawned behind closed doors in the 20th century, but in the 21st century, human-animal hybridization is finally creeping out into the open. In 2003, Chinese scientists successfully fused human cells with rabbit eggs, and that same year, Dr. Pan Zavos claimed to have created human cow embryos that could have been implanted into a woman and successfully come to term. In 2005, human Human fetal stem cells were transplanted by injection into the fetal cells of a sheep and succeeded in growing tissue of human origin. 
In 2006, human embryonic stem cells were successfully inserted into mouse blastocysts, basically an egg, where it grew into a human mouse embryo in vitro that could then be implanted into a foster mouse uterus to complete the chimera's creation. In 2017, scientists created a human pig chimera, over 2,000 of them, that were transferred to surrogate sows. More than 150 of the embryos developed into chimeras that could have come to term. In 2018, human sheep chimeras were successfully developed and were allowed to grow as embryos for 28 days before being terminated. In April of 2021, the Salk Institute for Biological Studies in La Jolla, California participated in a China-led research experiment that successfully grew human cells in monkey embryos. The long-tailed macaque human creation was allowed to survive and multiply, growing for 19 days before terminating it, all to, quote, aid the study of embryonic development. So why not just study embryos of the same species? Why create a chimera? The research team at the Salk Institute in California, led by Professor Juan Carlos Belmont, wrote, quote, These results may help to develop effective strategies to improve human chimerism in evolutionary distant species. In other words, they're just practicing creation creating human-animal hybrids so they can get better at it. Some U.S. lawmakers seek to outlaw human-animal hybrids, but when it came to a vote in the Senate at the end of May 2021, the ban on creating chimeras failed 48 to 49 along party lines. Why is this a divisive issue? Isn't the ethical question and answer clear here? One researcher from the Salk Institute oversaw a study funded by the NIH, which led to a report titled Emerging Field of Human neural organoids, transplants and chimeras, science, ethics, and governance. In reference to the title of the report, researchers said, quote, the term chimera is used because it is scientifically accurate, and the committee believes that its connection with the monsters of ancient myths is too remote to warrant avoiding its use. They genuinely believe mythical monsters like the half-man, half-bull Minotaur, the half-man, half-horse Centaur, or the half-woman, half-fish mermaids will not come to mind in the public discourse when human-animal hybrids are announced? The report also said some studies of human-animal hybrids created concerns about, quote, animals acquiring attributes that could be viewed as distinct human, or humans taking on roles that should be reserved for a deity. So the Chimera researchers are concerned about human-animal hybrids being worshipped as deities? Such as the ancient Chimera deity Ishtar, the half-owl, half-woman fertility goddess, Pan or Satyr, the half-man, half-goat god of Organesha, a Hindu god that is half-elephant, half-man. Egyptian, Assyrian, Greek, and Roman myths abound with creatures that are a cross between humans and animals. So does this illustrate the imagination of the human mind? Or is this evidence that the antiluvian world was successfully geoengineering human-animal hybrid? That are rolling out a post-human industrial world. And they're simply looking at us as a commodity and saying, humans have always been cheap, but now they're garbage. And if you read the writings of the UN heads and of the WEF, I mean, there's, 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 there's thousands of quotes we've gone over here. We've played the clips so many times. And they just say the future's not human. I don't believe in God, but we're about to become God. The Holy Grail is depopulating the general public, but the elite's getting life extension technology. And you see that in culture and movies, and, but, but that's all art ref reflecting life. And I've got an example of that cyberpunk 2077 Dark City. And I remember when they were developing that game, it's now the, one of the top games in the world. I was told by the developers of it that the profit character in there was based off me. I'm not trying to, again, toot my horn. It's just a fact. Just like Chris Carter said, the new character in The Last X-Files was based on yours truly and a character in Homeland and so many others. Some have me as a good guy, some as a bad guy, but they've now put out a new AI uh, voiced version of myself for the game that, that basically talks about what's going on. But the plot of the game 
is a biochip that makes you live forever, and that's what the elites have developed. That's what the whole game's about, is getting immortality. But, but that's, that's, that's a video game. Let's play the high priest in the World Economic Forum, Harari, saying human history is over. And we've got all these articles in the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Atlantic, the Economist, saying that the human era is over and we're cheering it on. Humans were bad. We're worthless. We hurt the earth. We don't have free will. Well, the globalists actually don't believe that. They want you to hate yourself and have a self-fulfilling prophecy. The world's going to end in 2030 because if they get their plans of Gen 2030 through, you'll think it's the end of the world. And for most of us, it will be. They're a cult. So the corporations, the big, powerful corporations, the, the grocery stores and the airlines and the airports and the colleges, they have all been told you'll be part of the future and you'll be have a secured future if you do X, Y, Z. And they are putting those functions into place. This is all out in the open now. So they tell you you don't have free will, so you don't think you have free will, while well, they program the AI to basically program you to get you to give up your free will and become a machine. You have free will, you can transcend and be a creator, but you have to understand you have that will and make those conscious decisions in that will to be able to do this. I mean, listen, I'm giving you the ultimate secrets the enemy doesn't want you to know. They're losing sleep over this right now. If you pay attention, if you're not fallen, if you're not stupid, if you have eyes to see, ears to hear, if you have a soul to receive this, and, and we start implementing this with our decisions and with our free will, it's over for them. So here he is saying, what did Oppenheimer say? I want world government. It'll stop nuclear war. They had the UN to stop this. But the very UN hands out the nuclear weapons like hotcakes and starts wars. So they sell, give up your free will, let us run your life, unify behind us, and we'll protect you from the AI while they do everything they can to replace us with robots and self-checkout lanes and robot farming and robot teachers and robot police and robot broadcasters and robot movie stars and robot everything. So everything he's telling you he's going to save you from, they are developing and deploying. Finish the clip. Of really an alien invasion. That's like somebody coming and telling us <laughs> that, you know, there is a fleet, an alien fleet of spaceships coming from planet Zircon or whatever with, super, with highly intelligent beings. They'll be here in five years and take over the planet. Maybe they'll be nice. Maybe they'll solve cancer and climate change, but we are not sure. This is what we are facing, except that the aliens are not coming in spaceships from planet Zircon, they're coming from the laboratory. Okay, that's an exact... In fact, play the whole clip again. Play the clip from the beginning, because I want people to hear the part where he says, we all submit to the global government and unify, we'll protect you from what we've created and, and rolled out. That is a word-for-word -word Alex Jones quote for at last, at least a decade. They're not coming in alien spaceships, they're coming from laboratories. They're making aliens in laboratories. And he's telling you it's all ugly and bad, but don't worry. Give up your rights. We'll protect you. We'll finish the clip. We'll start the second hour. Go ahead. Except that the aliens are not coming in spaceships from planet Zircon. They're coming from the laboratory. No, stop right there. I want to play it from the start of the clip. The beginning of the clip. Meaning the start of the clip. Roll it again. It is the end of human history. Not the end of history, the end of human-dominated history. History will continue with somebody else in control. 